Hey YouTube. In today's video, we are going to explore one of NixOS's most useful features, and that is automatic upgrades. If you are new to NixOS, but you are familiar with other Linux distributions, you might already know commands like apt update, apt upgrade on Debian based systems or Pac-Man on Arch. In NixOS, we use NixOS rebuild switch to update our system and apply changes to our system configuration. Automated upgrades on NixOS are nothing fancy really. This is basically just a systemd service that is executing the NixOS rebuild command for us. Why would you want to use automatic upgrades. First of all, there's security. Automated upgrades ensure that you always have the latest patches without having to update your system manually. The second is, of course, convenience. Your system will just stay current without human intervention. And that is perfect when you are running multiple machines or you just want one less thing you need to worry about. Third, consistency. Regular updates prevent you from small problems adding up because you have postponed system updates for months. As I already said, the auto upgrade feature in NixOS is simply a systemd service that runs NixOS rebuild switch on a schedule that we can define ourselves. As we will see in this video, it is quite powerful and there are quite a lot of options we can use here. Today we will start with the very basics and we will also have a look into some more intermediate and advanced features. But as you might know from the help pages for the NixOS rebuild command, there are really a lot of options that you can use with NixOS Rebuild. And I will try to cover the most important in this video today. So let's get started. Let's start with the simplest way for enabling auto upgrades and that is Nix channels. If you are still using channels and you are not using Nix flakes, this is the way to go. So all you need to do is to add this to your system configuration. Enable equals true will enable the auto upgrade service for your system. The channel specifies the NixOS channel that the upgrade process should follow. If you do not define a channel here in your options, it will just take the default channel that is set for your system. So no worries about that. And the dates, that's actually when the upgrades should happen for you. And when we have a look at the NixOS options, you can see here there are a couple of more options. We will have a look into some of them later in the video. And when it comes to the dates and the execution times, you can just click here on the auto upgrade dot dates. And here you are led to an explanation on how you can exactly define when your auto upgrade service should run. So basically what this channel update does is it will automatically update all of the packages that are installed in your system based on the upgrades that the channel offers. But for example, this will not execute any changes you have made to your system configuration. Now let's shift our focus to a more modern and powerful approach here, Flake-based auto upgrades. While channels work for simple setups, Flakes offer significant advantages for system and upgrade management, especially when you are dealing with multiple configurations and multiple machines. If you are not yet using Flakes on your NixOS system, please have a look at my Nix Flakes playlist, there are, I don't know, around 15 or 17 videos just about this topic and there you will learn everything from basics to advanced. To enable auto upgrade with Flakes, there's not very much we need to change. Instead of the channel, we reference Flake here and as you can see here, you could just reference a git repo where you have your Flake code lying. And as you can see here, you can easily just use a remote repo for your flake and it will automatically pull it down from GitHub or whatever to apply to your system configuration. The key difference here is we are using flake instead of channel to get our updates here. That means we get all the benefits we have from flakes 
for building our system configuration. With Flakes, we are locking our dependencies so we know exactly what versions of programs we will be getting. And we have everything in version control, so it's easy to track changes over time. And it's very easy to make things modular here because we can just share parts of the configuration between different machines and users. And that's much easier to maintain over multiple systems. And as you will see, we will have a more fine-grained control over the NixOS rebuild command. And in comparison to the channel, we are not just updating apps here. We can also automatically apply configuration changes besides the updates. And that is making things even more easy for us. So in the following sections, we will have a look at the most common Flex we can use with the NixOS rebuild command in combination with the automatic upgrades. And we will have a look into different strategies here. And a little quick tip before we dive deeper, of course, you could just reference a local flake that is on your computer. You don't have to use a remote flake from your Git repo. Now let's have a look at some flag specific options in detail here. As you can see here, I have a flags option here. And within this flags option, I can almost add anything to the auto upgrade service that I can do with the NixOS rebuild command. So for example, when I go to my terminal and I just enter NixOS rebuild help, you can see we get the documentation for the NixOS rebuild command. And down here, you have all the options we can use with our auto upgrade command. And when we scroll a little bit down, we will get to our flake related options. And uh, these options we will explore a little bit. The first option I would like to talk about is the dash dash recreate log file. So with this configuration on the screen, here is what happens behind the scenes. The auto upgrade service will run each day at four o'clock in the morning. And with the recreate log file, it will discard any existing log file and recreate the log file. So that means that it will fetch the latest versions from the defined input of your flag. And the new log file will be created with the latest versions of your inputs. So that means your system will be rebuilt and all dependencies will be updated. In this scenario, it could also make sense to add the commit log file option here because that does exactly what it sounds like. Each time the automatic upgrade is triggered, it commits the changes to the Git repo and that will help you keep track of changes here. Now let's have a look at the opposite approach. And this is the option no update log file. And what this does is it will tell the NixOS rebuild command to stick exactly to the versions that are stated in your log file. Let's say you have just pulled your flag from the Git repo to your computer here, and um, there have been changes made to the configuration then the NixOS rebuild command will apply the changes, but it will not update the inputs of your flag here. So you can be sure that all your latest and greatest configuration updates are applied to your system, but you don't have to worry that anything breaks because one of the dependencies changed. This scenario is very useful when you want to push configuration changes to different machines because the auto upgrade service will automatically apply the new system configuration. But as we are not updating log files here, we don't install any new package versions. As I said, there are more options available on the NixOS rebuild command. So for example, you can define an operation so you can choose whether to switch to the new configuration or just make it boot default. And of course, you can define automatic reboots. So when we go down here, we have the allow reboot option here. And as you can see up here, you can also define a reboot window. So you can be sure that the system is not rebooted when there are a lot of users on it. 
Now let's have a look at the update input option here. And the update input option does what it seems like. This will update a single defined input from your Nix Flake. So in this case, we just update Nix packages, but we do not update any of the other inputs for our Flake here. And of course, you can select multiple inputs to update for your Flake here, one by one. Now let's play a little bit around with this. So here I have a system configuration that is based on my self-hosting playbook that will basically just install a completely configured server running Portana NetN and base row. This system already has automatic upgrades enabled. And in this case, I use the recreate log file option to update all inputs when using the auto upgrade. And now let's see how we can extend this a little bit to get notified if something goes wrong here. So what I will do here, I will just go to my configuration.nix and up here I have this uh, let block where I define some variables. And in here, I will just define a simple notify script and this will simply add a log entry into a file in var log and upgrade failure.log. So this is as basic as it can get, but you can do a lot more with these things. So for example, you could just call an API to notify that something went wrong on this particular machine here. But I think for demonstration purposes, this should be good enough. And then I will just go down here in my configuration and maybe over here. And I will just add some extra configuration for our NixOS upgrade service. And as you can see, I enable just one extra option. So for the unit configuration, I just define that on failure, another service, which is called NixOS upgrade failure notify will be triggered. And of course, we will also need to define the service here. So as you can see here, this is just a simple notification service and it's a one shot service. And as you can see, this would just execute the notify script that we have defined up here. And that's basically all of it. Now let's head to our machine here. And we can just apply our system configuration here. And now we can check for the services here. So we just run systemctl status and then we go for Nixos upgrade. And as you can see, the service is loaded, it's inactive, and it is triggered by a timer here. And we can do the same for the Nixos upgrade failure notify here. And as you can see, this service is also installed. It's inactive now. And uh, down here, we have a couple of test runs I made this morning when I prepared for the video here. And now just for testing, I will just trigger the NixOS upgrade service manually here. And this will start the automatic upgrade process. And as you can see, this finished without error. And we can just have a look at our logs here and see what has happened. And as you can see, the service has been executed around one and a half minutes ago. And here we have our log output. So it starts with building our system configuration. And here's some deprecation warning concerning the recreate log file. And actually the state at the moment is that these flag commands in the NixVS rebuild command are flagged as deprecated. But at the time of this video, there is no real replacement for that. So that is probably subject to change within the next month, but we can be pretty sure that we get a replacement for this. And for this upgrade, there were no real changes that the system needed to do here. And if it's a bigger upgrade, you will see the complete output as you are used to it from NixOS Rebuild Switch. So you will see all the store path that are built and you will have a complete lock in here where you can see what exactly happened. And now let's try to 
trigger a failure. So what I will just do is I will just rename my flake.nix file to flake.backup. And now I will trigger my upgrade process again. And as you can see, this has produced an error. And now we should have a log entry in our upgrade failure.log. And as you can see, we have our failure timestamp here. And if we trigger this once more, we will have a second entry and so on and so forth. To wrap up, NixOS auto upgrades deliver a powerful way to keep your systems and your system configuration updated. And especially when you have multiple systems, you can very easily push your configuration changes to a remote Git repo and then make all of your machines just pull the flake that belongs to them and let them automatically upgrade the system configuration and also the installed packages if you want to. We had a look into the channel-based approach and into the flakes approach and as you could see just from this little explanation here the flakes approach is much more flexible and you can do a lot more with it the good part when it comes to flakes is also you can just use the flake inputs you have defined so if you want more stability you can just uh, have the latest stable release of nixos in your flake inputs and then you will just get the latest security patches or you want to have the latest and greatest packages installed automatically and then you go for the unstable branch and that makes it really flexible and really powerful and as we have seen there are different strategies when it comes to the log files what we have also seen in this video is that we can very easily extend the automated upgrade functionality to build a very simple notification system. And as I said, this was uh, kind of the bare minimum, but uh, you can get as sophisticated as you want with this. And with this, you can easily create a good solution that works for personal and for production use, really. So that's all from me today. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just drop a comment and I will try to answer as quick as possible. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye.